Hey friends, Ryan Frank, welcome to the Daily Coffee Chat. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, podcast listeners. Hope that everyone is doing well. It's Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. I was reminded this morning that we are only 12 weeks away from Megacon. Now, Megacon looks different this year uh, because of this pandemic and because of COVID-19. We're not able to do our normal three-day event in Nashville. We have expanded it to a five-day online experience um, with some options. One of those options being we are going to do a two-day event at a location that we hope to disclose soon. For a small group of people, I think it's going to be 50 people. Um, so if you haven't checked out all those options lately, here's what you need to do. You need to go to kidmennation.com, kidmennation.com. There's a little button at the top of that page that says Megacon. Click that button and you can learn about all the details. This five-day Megacon online is complimentary to everyone. Um, there are some added perks for um, that you need to check out if you want to make an additional upgrade to your Megacon experience. Well, good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Hope you're, you all are doing well. Question, how did you start in children's ministry? And why? Maybe a better question instead of how is why did you start in children's ministry? Why did you start in children's ministry? Um, yeah, I remember as a 12-year-old kid in sixth grade, I started volunteering on a bus route at my church. And that turned into working the bus ministry through all of junior high and senior high and uh, running a Sunday morning bus route and a midweek bus route and doing bus visitation on Saturdays. And and I started in the bus ministry as a sixth grader because the bus driver said he needed some help. And so I started because there was a need. Maybe some of you are like that, where you started because there was a need. My senior year of high school, my youth pastor said, Ryan, I would like for you to start teaching. I want to train you to teach kids' church and to help me for a couple of weeks. And that turned into um, at least a decade or 15 years, maybe 20 years of, let me do the math in my head. It probably wasn't 20 years, more like 15 years of teaching kids' church every Sunday morning. And um, that was, I started teaching kids' church because not really there was a need, but I was asked, I was asked to teach kids' church. Um, I remember when we started doing a basketball league at our church. And uh, for the kids, we called it, this was before Upward Basketball. We started a, a program called Jam Basketball. And Jam was for junior age ministries. And we started doing that because a group of us in the church felt as though there was this unmet need in the community for something like this for the kids. And so we started this basketball program because we sensed a felt need. Maybe some of you started in children's ministry because you sensed a felt need. Maybe you started because your kids were in there. Um, you know, I was going through my stuff recently, and I have um, a few of these notebooks that are buried in my office in a cabinet, and they are old workshop notes. Now, this is when I used to um, do a lot of these Saturday seminars and, and stuff. This was pre-webinars and pre-coffee chats and pre-Facebook lives. Um, but I used to, when I would do these seminars, I would take my notes and I would uh, keep them all in these binders. And I this is volume one, okay? Volume one. I've got three of these things full of these old seminar notes where I would keep a list of uh, the, the things I needed for the seminar, for the workshop. 
And then the, this was a copy of my notes with the, the blanks filled in. And then normally, yeah, like this, I would have a copy with uh, the blanks not filled in so I could run copies of it on the photocopier. And I was flipping through some of these the other day. And um, man, there's there's some, I'd love to just go back and teach again. Now, some of them are totally um, irrelevant for our time. I've got one in here called um, Mission Organization, Bringing Order to Your Ministry. And I actually talk about like getting a day timer. Uh, do you remember day timers? The old like notebooks that you would buy all the sheets for? And um, you would keep your calendar and everything in your day timer. Um, I also, in one of these, talk about Palm Pilots. You remember Palm Pilots to help you stay organized? Um, but there was one that I found that still really, well, there's several. There's a lot that are still relevant that you could still teach. Dealing with Defiant Dudes. Um, kids Church from Ho-Hum to Wow. But the one I wanted to point out to you was I've got this one on why people volunteer. And um, I, there are a few points in particular that have not changed. And, and I first taught this a decade ago, at least probably more like 15 years ago. Why people volunteer. You've got to know. And I don't know where I came up with these points. I was a young kids pastor. So I'd say more than likely I still I ripped them off somebody another workshop I went to or a book I read or a tape I listened to or something. Um, I doubt that this was my own content. I probably, again, ripped it off and tweaked it. I don't know, I don't remember this far back, but I know that these are good points on why people volunteer. One, some people volunteer um, because they want to do something useful with their time. And I think that's still true today. There are people that would want to volunteer and help because they really do want to do something useful. They want to make a difference. Number two, they volunteer because they think they'll enjoy what it is you're asking them to do. Maybe they love kids or they love games or they love crafts or they love to teach. Uh, but they, they feel like they'll really enjoy what you've asked them to do. Number three. They think they'll make, they think a friend or a family member will benefit. They, vo they volunteer because they think that someone in their family or a friend will benefit. So in the case of children's ministry, maybe they have a child in the children's ministry and they think it'll be beneficial for their child or their grandchild if they volunteer in the children's ministry. Um, always remember this, that people um want to help those that they really care about and you can work that angle when you're trying to recruit people number four people volunteer because they previously benefited from the activity that you're asking them to volunteer with so um people often a lot of people that serve in prison ministry are people that you know what they've had they have a past and god used that um and maybe they, maybe they did some time, or maybe they got in trouble with the law, and now they want to make a difference in prison ministry or jail ministry. Um, people that a lot of times will volunteer in a food pantry or, um, you know, something like that, or a, a Salvation Army, people that benefited from something like that in their life. So as you think children's ministry, sometimes people will benefit or they'll serve in children's ministry because they themselves have benefited from children's ministry in the past. Number five, they want to learn or get experience. They want to learn or get experience. Listen, if you've got young people in your church that want to be in the ministry, man, you need to get them plugged into children's ministry because there's no better place to get experience for church work. Sometimes new parents, new grandparents, they want to get experience. And so I'll get experience by serving in this ministry. For some, they have free time. They have extra time on their hands, and yes, I'll help. Maybe it's senior, a senior adult. Maybe it's a single adult. They have some free time, and they want to do something significant with that free time. Um, they want to do, here, so let me review these with you. They want to do something useful. They'll 
They think they'll enjoy the work. Someone they love or someone in their family or close to them will benefit, so they'll volunteer. They previously themselves have benefited. They want to learn or get experience. They have lots of free time. And I'm sure there are other whys, but those were the six that I had listed on my notes. Now, when you think about your volunteer team, they are one of your greatest assets, perhaps the greatest asset that you have. And there are probably six plus another six plus another six, although I don't want to stop there, six, six, six plus another 10, plus another 20 reasons why your people have chosen to volunteer. Some have been doing it for a long time. Some are new. You have your coffee for the coffee chat today. I hope that you do. For what, whatever the reason that they're volunteering, here, here, here's the thing I wanna remind you of today. And I have an angle why I'm telling you this is because I really want you to get your team and I want you to participate in Global Kid Men Day. Um, you probably figured that out because that's why we that's what we titled the daily coffee chat today more about global kid men day. But here's the thing, friends. Your children's ministry team, they need to constantly be reminded of why they are doing what they are doing, and they need to be given the tools to do what they are doing well. They need to be reminded of the why, and they need to be given the tools that they need to do what they are doing well. Listen, you have people in your children's ministry team that they love the Lord, and they love kids, but they need some training, right? You have some people on your children's ministry team that, you know what, they've got years of training, but they need to be reminded why they're doing what they're doing. Now, this is exactly why we've created Global Kid Men Day. And I'm going to take a few minutes and unpack this for you. You've heard me talk about Global Kid Men Day. You've seen it on Facebook. You've seen it all over Instagram. You've seen it in Kids Matter magazine. More than likely, you know a children's pastor that's participating in Global Kid Men Day. And let me unpack it for you. Now, if you have already committed to Global Kid Men Day for you and your team, or you're one of our amazing hosts, stick with me because I think, I think you'll still benefit from this training. But what I want to do right now is I want to um, share my screen. Okay, let me share my screen. And boom. All right. We are at globalkidmenday.com. Now, this is the first time we've ever done something like this. We do conferences like Megacon. We do webinars all the time. But this first time we've done an event for you and your volunteers that happens at your church. Okay. And it all happens on August the 8th, which is right around the corner, Saturday, August the 8th. Join the first ever global Kid Men event. Now, I'm not going to make you watch this video right now but I encourage you to watch it later. I take about two minutes and explain the heart behind Global Kid Men Day and how it works. But I'm gonna do that with you live right now in the coffee chat. This is a three hour Kid Men event where I am bringing you conference quality training. Okay, I'm bringing it to you. And the beautiful thing is, it is all happening virtually on the screen. Let me unpack that for you. Kids really do matter. I'm not going to read this to you. You read it on your own. I take a few minutes to remind you why kids matter. They are important to Jesus. Most people that give their lives to Christ do so as a child, right? You establish your worldview as a child. Kids bring life to a church. Reach kids, reach the parents. <clears throat> um. Children's ministry is the lifeblood, I believe, of a, of a growing, vibrant church. And I believe most pastors would agree with that. Um, but here's the thing. People need to rem be reminded of that. You know that as a children's ministry leader. <coughs> excuse me. Your volunteers need to be reminded of this over and over and over again. Now, here's the thing. 
I am gathering together some great speakers, okay? There's a picture of Ryan Frank, myself. He's not all that great of a speaker, but he loves you and he loves kid men. And so he is going to be there. All right, I am hosting this with Corey Jones, who you see on the screen. My wife, Beth, who you see on the screen, is one of our speakers. David and Becky Wakerly, they are the kids pastors at Hillsong Church in Sydney, Australia. They are speakers. Ricardo Miller is a radio host, a kids pastor, an author, a, one of the most sought after speakers in children's ministry. Esther Moreno. Um, Esther Moreno is a kids pastor. I just wrote the forward to her book last year. She is a fabulous speaker, author, kids pastor. Um, I bring her to, to Megacon every year. She is a great speaker. She's going to be there. Shannon Lovelady is a pastor in Carrollton, Georgia, a lead pastor. And I want a lead, I want a lead pastor to talk to your volunteers and share his heart. It's going to be so good. Cy Perry. Cy Perry lives in the UK. He's a pastor. He writes kids music. Super, super creative. Jonathan Banks is a youth minister in Chicagoland. He is a brilliant thinker. Um, and I've, I've been having a lot of, I, he's been on the coffee chat with me. I think the role of Jonathan Banks. Bishop Michael Pitts is a friend of mine. He is a pastor at Cornerstone Church um, in Ohio. And um, Bishop Pitts has a lot to say, especially about this topic of race. And we're going to talk about that in Global Kid Men Day. Abby Kuntz is my sister-in-law. She's my sister-in-law. She's also a licensed clinical social worker. I bring her to Megacon every year. She's going to talk about anxiety with kids. We've got a great line of speakers. Now, here's the thing. The schedule is on the website. This is like a simulcast, but it's not a simulcast. This is a video-driven event, but it does not happen live. This is all pre-recorded. In fact, our speakers are recording all of their content this week, um, which made me think I of a note I need to I need to have them say, or I mean I need I need to write for myself. One second. Thank you. If I don't write things down, I forget them. Thanks for letting me write that down. Our speakers are pre-recording all of this content. When you sign up for Global Kidman Day for you and your team. We are going to deliver this video file to you 10 days in advance. So all you need on Global Kid Men Day is your computer and a laptop. You don't even need Wi-Fi. All you need to do is push play on the video file that we send you 10, 10 days, two weeks in advance. It takes a lot of pressure off you um, when you have your team there. You're not, you're not relying on all these weird connections and logins and Wi-Fi connect speeds and stuff like that. But here's the schedule. Um, Esther Moreno is gonna kick off by talking about children's ministry essentials. Esther is so high energy. She's gonna talk about things every Kidman leader needs to know, whether you work with two-year-olds or 12-year-olds, all right? Beth Frank, my wife, is gonna talk about making a place for everyone. She's gonna really talk about opening your heart in your classroom to kids, kiddos with special needs. And what does that look like? And what do I do when a kid with special needs shows up in my class? All of this content is really gonna be targeted to volunteers. It's gonna be super, super nuts and bolts practical. My sister-in-law, Abby, is gonna talk about ministry to anxious kids. We live in um, the age of anxiety, Time Magazine says. And these kids deal with such anxiety. How do we help them in our small groups? How do we help them in our Sunday school classes? How do we help them on Sunday mornings with anxiety? And then we're pausing for your team to do some group discussions and individual reflections. And then we're going to do a virtual roundtable with Ricardo Miller, Jonathan Banks, and Bishop Pitts. And we're going to talk about children's ministry and race. And um, what kind of conversations should we be having as teachers and as leaders 
and, and how do we help kids? Because listen, we want to say kids are colorblind. Kids aren't colorblind. Um, now maybe some kids are, but you know what? Kids, we've got to help kids understand that we are all creating God's image. We have got to help kids understand that we are to love our neighbor. And we need to, ident- we need to define who our neighbor is, who are our, who is our neighbor, right? So we're going to do that. Then Shannon Lovelady, a senior lead pastor, is going to talk about secret in- ingredients to an effective kids ministry from a pastor's heart. He's just going to love on these kid men leaders. Cy Perry is going to talk about simple ways to connect with digital kids. David and Becky Wakerly are going to talk about how, how do you connect with parents as a teacher, as a leader, whether you work with the three-year-olds or the 13-year-olds. What are some things you can do to connect with mom and dad? Then we're going to wrap up by having some more group discussions, and then I'm going to give a final shot in the arm where I encourage your team. You know what? We're going into a new school year. We need you now more than ever. We are in this pandemic. These are crazy days. Those kids need you more now than ever. And I'm going to encourage your volunteers to pray for kids more than ever and to love on those kids more than ever and to prepare for them when they show up, whether it's on Zoom or whether it's in person, more than ever. And I'm going to ask them to sign up and and recommit until the Lord changes their calling or calls them home. And I'm going to really, really encourage and love on your volunteers. So that's the lineup. Now, Ryan, um, what if we can't do this on August 8th? Global Kidman Day happens August 8th, but we've already got something major on the church calendar. I'm hoping that everybody can do this on August 8th, but if you need to do it the next Saturday, that's fine. If you want to do it the next Tuesday at 3 p.m., I don't care. My heart is I want to to challenge, equip, energize, inspire your volunteers. Um, I want to bring them back together and remind them that what they are doing matters. So I'm hoping everybody can do this on Saturday, August 8th at 9 a.m., your local time. Um, Because it's all pre-recorded and you get the video file two weeks in advance, you can just start at 9 a.m. wherever you're at in the, around the globe. Um, but if you need to do it another time, that is perfectly fine with me. I just hope you'll do it because I want to I want to help your volunteers. Now, some of you you have two options with Global Kidmen Day. You can get a host pass. That means you open up your church to other churches, or you can get a watch pass for you and your your ministry. Um, all of our hosts, as they're being added, pop up on this map, which is kind of fun. Uh, now, Ryan, here's another question I've been getting a lot lately. Ryan, what if we aren't regathering yet? What if our church is still quarantined, or what if we aren't opening up our church until September or mid-August or November? Well, we're going we're gonna to do this. And when we created Global Kidman Day, of course, the goal is bring everybody together at the church because that just adds so much energy and camaraderie. But we have a lot of churches that are going to do this virtually. So it, you and we'll, we'll do it however works best for you. Because you download the video file, you can have all of your team log into Zoom or we will give you a password protected Vimeo link. So you can ask them to, hey, would you log in on Saturday, August 8th at your convenience and and watch the video? And for those of you that are going to not going to be able to meet in person, we'll give you ideas of how to drive engagement and get your leaders to actually do it. So you can either do this in person, which is, of course, best. I think we would all agree. Or you can do it virtually, whatever you need to do. Um, based upon your ministry context. Uh, You can read some testimonials. Um, We have some frequently asked questions, a little bit about Kids Matter, some social uh, images that you can use. But but here's the deal, kid men. Um, I really want you to participate in Global Kid Men Day. This is gonna be 
amazing content. I can promise you that. Uh, you will be so glad that here's the deal, 95 bucks. That's what it costs for you and your church to train your entire team, $95. Um, we have hundreds of churches from around the globe that are participating. And I want to encourage your church to do this. I'm hoping and planning on this becoming an annual event where we do this every August. I don't see, I mean, we may evaluate, realize September is better or um, October or June, I don't know. But I think we'll continue to do this every year in August for, to, for you. It's a $95 investment a $95 investment. If you, and I've got a feeling, even if you, if your budget is tight, I've just got to believe that God provide $95 somewhere for you to train, inspire, encourage, equip your entire team of volunteers from the nursery all the way up to the preteens and everybody in between. Um, if you have a family ministry, those leaders will benefit. In fact, I even think those that work with teenagers, I think they're going to benefit. 90% of the content, 95% is not going to be for those of you that work with preschoolers or elementary. You are going to find it is so applicable to those that are serving kids and families. So that's Global Kid Men Day, friends. As I go back to my notes, listen, I didn't really get into it, but part of my training here in my old notebook on recruiting and maintaining volunteers is that you've got to train them. You've got to train them. It's one thing to recruit. It's another thing to retain. A lot of you think you have a recruiting problem when in reality, if you really evaluate it, you might have a retention problem. Um, if you just learn to keep those volunteers on, on mission, and if you're, if you're constantly reminding them of the why, and you're building into the culture of your volunteers, and you are creating community with your volunteers, when you do that, you retain them. The more you retain them, the less you have to recruit, okay? Because you're not gonna be losing volunteers. So it's globalkidmenday.com. Friends, go check it out. And that wraps up our daily coffee chat. Thanks for joining me today. I love Kidmen community, YouTube, uh, podcast listeners. Thank you for what you do. Lots of great resources at kidsmatter.com. If you've not been there in a while, go check it out. Uh, Megacon is about 12 weeks away. Seems a little crazy. It's different this year because of the pandemic. Go to kidmennation.com and push that Megacon button at the top of the screen and uh, make sure you are participating. Friends, see you next time. Tomorrow, same time, same place for our coffee chat.